The Catalyst, a CEP podcast on bold leadership in the Ocala Metro. Hosted by the Ocala Metro Chamber and Economic Partnership. Sponsored by Douglas Law Firm. And recorded live at Wiley Productions Podcast Studios, located in Ocala, Florida. Welcome to The Catalyst. I'm your host, Natalie McComb, Vice President for the Ocala Metro Chamber and Economic Partnership Foundation, and I'm joined today by Sharice Rivers, CEO and Financial Planner with Zinnia Wealth Management. Great to have you on the show, Sharice. Well, thank you for having me. We, uh, we talk a lot about entrepreneurship on The Catalyst and about what led individuals down the path to business ownership. Um, you started Zinnia out of your home because you didn't like what you were seeing in the retirement planning industry. What did you mean by that? Well, I have bad habits. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I always feel like there's solutions to different problems. And I found a lot of problems in the financial services industry when I first started. I didn't know how to solve it just yet. I just knew there had to be a better way. And it was the scariest thing I ever did. I decided I'm going to go on my own and do it my way. Um, I came up against, you know, a bunch of hazards, a lot of naysayers saying it's not going to work. I wanted to be a fiduciary back then. And that was a, a new name in our industry. And so I said, I want to follow that protocol because it feels like it's right. It seems like it's right. You're looking out for the best interests of your client as a f- retirement planner. And so I started the, my walk mm-hmm. and um, with $1,000 in my pocket and um, never looked back. And all those naysayers today now, you know, they're, they're very positive. They're like, you know, we listen to you now, Sharice. So other advisors, which is really cool to hear. You know, there's so much information. He's like, you're really doing it right. Um, I think sometimes in our industry, our industry falls short. And we do things that are kind of old school. When there's so many new, new forward-thinking strategies for clients and how to lower fees and how to be a planner, not just a, you know, a salesperson. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. um, that's kind of was my first take. Wow. And, and where do you see most individuals fail in trying to plan for retirement on their own? Yeah. So um, we watch Kramer, on, you know, on TV and we're like, oh, we can do it. And people give it a jab and then they 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 realize that, um, OK, so Kramer's not always right. And they realize now I'm playing catch up and now I bought the stock five years ago. And now it's lost 50 percent. And now it's going to take me five years to get back to even I think people get discouraged Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times or and there's they're just not moving forward Mm -hmm. and they they sometimes quit or they make bad and emotional decisions so people fail to reach out to other uh, I would say advisors of the Mm -hmm. financial industry because of maybe they had a bad taste in their mouth but to um, get educated and to really learn like what needs to be done to be prepared for retirement. What do I need to cut out? Do I need to cut out my Starbucks coffee? You know, depending on our age, you know, if we're in the retirement red zone five years before retirement, you know, what do we need to do to be ready for five years? Because when we walk out the double doors of our employers in the job we've had for 30 years or so, you know, we're going to lose a paycheck. So how do we get a new paycheck? Because mm-hmm. income makes the world go round. And so trying to figure that strategy out is very hard for people. Mm-hmm. And because you now you're your, your own pension manager with this big loan sum of money. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like people often come to you a little too late? Um, What is what is really the age that that you feel like, you know, we need to be having these conversations? You know, that's an interesting question, because I always say it's never too late. Mm -hmm. Yet, if I can work with somebody 10 years before they retire, I mean, we can do some incredible positive damage (laughs) in in my world. Um, We can really focus more on the tax plan and how to do these conversions. So even if somebody's coming to me right before they retire, I have a plan for them. You know, our team at Zinnia Wealth Management, we are just very big into solutions. How do we get you there? Can you get there? What do you got to do? And I think that's what drives our entire team um, to succeed help people be successful so that they know when they can turn in those keys to their employer, et cetera. So, um, yeah, there's so much that goes into that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But it's good that you have, um, you know, you have a plan, you know, matter where you start. And if you have somebody that comes to you, that's, that's ambitious and already thinking about retirement when they're in their thirties, Hey, you've got more time to work with them and, and more solutions, you know, that they can plan ahead. Yeah. And if somebody's 
you know, just starting out, you know, I love Dave Ramsey's uh, Financial Peace University. I did it. I was at ELP with uh, Dave Ramsey's group for a while. It's fantastic. They have a, some things for children as well. I just bought one for my kiddos. And, um, you know, if you're, you're trying to save your first dollar and contribute your first hundred bucks, Vanguard's one of my most favorite companies for that, for low fees, mm-hmm. buy their funds. They're, they're, they're amazing. So for those beginners out there. Mm-hmm. And what advice would you have for someone who wants to be better about planning ahead and saving, but but really doesn't know where to start? I think um, looking at your budget. And so take inventory. Because a lot of people don't take inventory. They don't know where their money's at, where it's going. And, um, and, and on a monthly basis, on New Year's resolution is to mm-hmm. sit down with your partner, or your spouse, whoever, a family member, whoever it might be. It doesn't matter what age you are. And, you know, look at do we have a mortgage? Do we have a car payment? Do we want these things paid off so that we can start saving more? Do we have credit cards? If we have credit cards, how many credit cards do we have? Are they 20% interest or 5% interest? Start, And then you bring that information to a financial planner and they start to say, okay, pay the credit card that's 20% off first and slowly you know, work through getting the debt paid off so you can save more and more and more. But you got to work on the debt and where you're spending your money. I don't, can't tell you how many times I will help somebody budget. Mm-hmm. And I'll see all these extra costs. I'm like, where's that going? Where's this going? They're like, oh, I do this. I'm like, can you imagine if you stop doing that every week, those dollars back into your retirement plan? They're like, oh, wow. And I'm like, it's a miracle of compounding. And once you do it, like if you go to the Dave Ramsey site and do Financial Peace University, mm-hmm. um, they have that a gazelle approach. It's really cool. Um, and I highly recommend it for beginners as well. And when you're trying to save, um, but it, it, it encourages you. you. It's a new drive in your life. It's motivating because you're like, oh, wow, I can save this much. How much more can I save? It's mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. And then you start to become very financially um, influenced with the math. You start doing your own math and you don't need people like me once you start to figure it out until you're ready to retire, of course. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, and I'm sure sometimes folks need to actually see that magic number. You know, if I save this much every week or every month, multiply that times, you know, 12 months a year, like that can make a big difference in what I'm saving or again, my ability to pay off debt. Exactly. Sure. I mean, growing Zinnia Wealth Management, I was, uh, I took every dollar in the beginning. I didn't go buy a new car. I drove the same car for 10 years. Even when I could afford to go buy a brand new car, I still didn't. I was just so, it was so important to me to put the money back into employees and the team and benefits and growing the business. Cause I knew after so many years, then I would be saving. And that's exactly what happened. And sometimes you just got to get down to the nitty gritty and push push through those tough times and then you'll get there. Yeah. And in helping your clients, um, you focus on the protection of health care, financial security, planning their estate, and preserving freedom of choice. What do you mean by that freedom of choice? That is so open-ended. There's so many things. Um, let's paint a picture. Um, let's say you're get it, you're retired and you have a few choices. You can go do all the things that you've always wanted to do, but you never did because you were working nine to five. You're taking care of the kiddos. You got them to college. Um, what are those things you want to do? That freedom of choice. Do you, have you saved enough to travel the world? Or are you somebody that says, Sharice, I just want a garden. I just want to hang loose in my local area. Everybody has their own um, niches, right? Mm-hmm. And um, just the freedom of choice to decide what you want to do. But it's very hard to have the freedom of choice if you don't have a plan in place. And if you just say, okay, I'm retired, I'm going to start pulling money off the top of this, you know, mound of money, you know, you might not be spending what you could spend because you're out of fear that you could run out of money, right? Mm-hmm. So freedom of choice comes with proper planning and being prudent with your finances. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And and obviously for, for some folks, they picture retirement as being that travel the world, but for other folks, they just want that, they want that beach home. They want the home in the mountains or they, they just want to, you know, be able to enjoy their, their life and, and have the flexibility to visit family and, and you yeah. know, do what, do with as you mentioned, what they don't have time for. Yeah. And it's interesting because if I go back almost 20 years ago, when I got into the industry, the, the choices that retirees chose back then was I want to leave this massive legacy. And mm-hmm. over the last 20 years, the evolution of that story has changed. They're like, no, I want to spend my last dollar in my last breath. The kiddos will get the cars, they'll get the houses, they'll, they'll fend for themselves, right? I would say one out of 10 people want to leave this big dynasty and legacy f- to their clients now because they want to enjoy it. They've worked their, their butts off. They deserve it. They know it. Um, and so times are, 
always evolving and changing in the financial services industry. And then that also has to do with, you know, um, the people who are getting ready to retire and what they, what they what they want. Mm-hmm. And I think they've always been afraid to say, no, I do want to spend all my money. And now they're like, no, I really do want to spend all my <laughs> I'm money. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm like, Sharice, I've been listening to your show. I like that. Uh, yeah. Flying first class would be really hard for me in an airplane. But once a year, why not? Right. I've never done it. So yeah. indulge. Yeah. And you've been very successful with Zinnia, obviously growing your client base. I, I know you have uh, multiple offices now as well. And and uh, recently you made the uh, Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing uh, privately held businesses. This has actually been the third year in a row that, that Zinnia has, uh, has made that list. So what has this growth meant for you and your yeah. team? I'm sure it, part of it has been challenging, but it's also been something you've been able to celebrate. Definitely. Um, it gives me chills when we talk about that, because when I look at where I started in the trunk of my car with a thousand dollars to start my business to where I'm at today, it's um, it's overwhelming. It's an honor. Like I, I never imagined being in the Inc. 5000, not mm-hmm. just one year, but three years in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big deal. I had a full page spread um, our first year and you know, I, the thing is, we couldn't do it without our team. I, I'm big, big, big into team playing, treating your employees first and foremost, um, doing all those wonderful things for them. And in return, um, everybody reaps the benefit. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I um, for our team, our team has grown internally. The ladies of Zinnia have just it's inspired them. And if I go back to right before we won our first Inc. 5000 award, we started these mantras, and so, and one of, and that year was our mantra was RISA, R I S A. Um, what was that exactly? It was rise above, you know, mm-hmm. rise above um, of all things. Let's be team players, you know. When someone needs help, you know, stay in your lane, but reach out and touch mm-hmm. somebody, help them when when the need is there. And it was a really big year for us, mm-hmm. and it just really helped us figure out how to work together as we were growing, and. Um, learn how to coordinate our different opportunities and our different personalities and that kind of stuff. So that was the beginning of it and um, making sure your team is happy. Um, I truly believe that treating your employees as number one is the key to a, a great growing company like, mm-hmm. and giving back. And it's more about them than you. And and by doing that, it, it pours over to your clients and your clients see it and you know, in the Inc. 5000, I, I got to have my team and I've got to have my clients that have stayed consistent with me. You know, mm-hmm. our, our business is generated by referrals by um, a very large percentage. And we couldn't do that if we weren't doing the right thing. Right. I feel like we're yeah. in the right place. I feel like this point that at Zinnia Wealth Management, I just feel like we're we're consistently looking ahead and mm-hmm. staying positive and just staying educated and trying to keep everybody happy at the same time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And any, any little nuggets of advice that you would have to, to other business owners that are really looking to improve their, their culture of their organization? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Every company is a little bit different. But I learned years ago, make sure you pay your employees really good. Make them feel valuable because they are. And you cannot do what you are doing. I, you know, I can't be on radio and TV. I, I can't sit there and continue to manage portfolios the right way if I don't have a bunch of people doing a lot of stuff for me, right? Mm-hmm. I remember when I did it all myself. So make sure that they feel valuable. Um, we, we do quarterly team playing events. We'll go somewhere, do something. It's always fun. Every Friday, our team meeting, we do something cool. You know, it's not just talking about the business. So it's just kind of keeping that culture very positive. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm big in the culture. Our team is big in the culture. Um, when we hire somebody, we want it to be them to be just another positive person coming in and saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna crush it." You know, let's let's do this together. New ideas. We love ideas. So allow your employees to be a teammate with you, even mm-hmm. though you're the boss. Um, l- allow them to feel comfortable to come to you with ideas and even implement them. I think that is key. It makes them feel like they're more part of they're more of a partner, right? I never had that when I was working for another company. And I just said, I want to make sure people feel that way because I never got that. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I know that, um, you know, you mentioned some of the, the outreach that you do in addition to financial planning and serving your clients. So I know you spend a lot of time educating the public about financial planning, and you do that in a, in a variety of different ways. You have some um, guidebooks on, on your website that folks can download for free. There's also articles um, that you've published in a variety of publications, um, but you also have your own podcast and radio show um, called Retirement Coffee Talks. So, so why is this, I, I'm sure all of this keeps you very busy, why is this type of a free education and outreach important to you and your business? What our grandparents teach us at the end of the day? When something's too good to be true, it is. And they also said, treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how many times I've walked into a place buying something and I feel like I'm working with a salesperson and I really just want to talk and share what I'm looking for and I just don't want to be sold. So what I learned in the financial services industry, it's a dog and pony show. You go to a dinner seminar, it's a dog and pony show. They're trying to make you cry. They're not getting down to the nuts and bolts. And I fought it for years. I said, that is not me. I'm never going to do that. I want to educate people. I want them to know where they're at. I want them to see where they're at. And I just want to give them the free information they're looking for because they probably don't need us right now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But they probably will need us in the future. But let's at least share the information, give it to them for free, and then they can apply it. And then when it's right, it's a right fit and it just all works together, then they'll they'll call us, right? Or Mm -hmm. you call somebody, but at least we're we're helping and guiding our community locally where I'm going to see you at the public or I'm going to see you at the school with my kids you know what I mean and it's just um it's just that feel of community and this the love I have to educate I used to be a dance teacher Mm -hmm. and I loved teaching right and I I just feel like I'm in the same place right now um and our advisors and our team I think we're really truly all the same way we just love educating and teaching and sharing as much as we can and um, it's a big part of how Zinnia is run, actually. Mm-hmm. And while you give some great advice, you also have a lot of fun on your show, I know. <laughs> um, so you include a lot of celebrity uh, guest appearances. So I was just um, perusing your website, and, and you've had Jason Aldean, Steve Spurrier, Emmett Smith, Bruce Arians, former Vice President Mike Pence, and then, of course, my personal favorite, Tim Tebow, um, as, a, as a fellow Gator. I'm very jealous of, uh, of the fact that you had him on your show. So any guest in particular that that's really surprised you the most or made for a really interesting interview? You know, it is crazy. I'm so blessed. Uh, our, our whole team is so blessed to have these opportunities. Never in my right mind did we ever think financial planning going celebrity, right? <laughs> like never. And I just, I think it's just how, you know, our impression resonates around the community and the world. And all those interviews were amazing. I've learned so much from all of them, um, sideline conversations to, I have cell phones to some of, the, a lot of these people. It's crazy. Um, and I, I can't tell you which one's my favorite because they are all my absolute favorite. But I have a fun story about Eddie George. Okay. Um, so uh, Isaiah Thomas was, I love that interview with him. Um, Stephen A. Smith, he, we got him to get very comfortable and like sobby like mm. that was also because he's like a big hardcore guy yeah. he's going to be very opinionated but in our interview I was just like no let's talk about the kiddos no. <laughs> he's like, he was, I, I sidelined him so that was a great interview but yeah. Eddie George he's he's a cool dude um, I met him at a Tim Tebow Foundation scramble mm-hmm. and I, I looked at him like that guy looks familiar and I'm like hey what's your name he's like oh I'm Eddie J- George I'm like oh cool I was like I know you <laughs> he's like, and he's like who are you and I said, Sharice Rivers. He's like, hey, um, are you the Sharice I'm playing in Pebble Beach in two weeks? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't know who I'm playing with, but I guess I'm playing with you, right? Mm-hmm. But he was a financial planner as he mm. was in transition. We talked mm-hmm. we talked smack about financial planning around the country and all this stuff. And so when I went to Pebble Beach, we, we played golf. But I was able to get an interview with him. And it, he was just a neat guy. And it was nice because I could relate with the financial planning world mm-hmm. and how he was, you know, big time football player, then had to look for a job, right? Mm-hmm. And financial planning. And now he's, you know, off to the road and the races again, right? Doing commercials with him, Tebow, et cetera. So um, I, it's really hard. That was a fun one. That is a lasting image 
Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I, I can't. I wish I could. They're yeah. all so they're all so much fun. I'm just I'm honored and, and blessed. Just the, I'm like you know, you know one thing I learned about these interviews is that they all pull up their pants this, the same way we do. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't get nervous about them, and we just enjoy them. And I learn about them. What are their charities? You know, when are they going to retire? Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. And um, you know, we scratch their back, they scratch ours. Yeah, yeah. And so, so what's next for you in Zinnia Wealth Management? What are your ambitions as you look ahead into 2024? That's a big question. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's been conversations of M&A out there and franchising Zinnia. But the one thing I love about Zinnia and our team, what we do is that we own it. We run it together. Mm-hmm. You know, we're in Ocala and Gainesville in the villages and we like it like that. So I don't know. But the one thing that we, our team is focused on is forward thinking for the clients. So we're, we're going to stay focused on the clients and retirement strategies and how to get people to retire faster, what's out there, um, technology. We're big in technology. Uh, I created a new uh, platform and technology software by telling a guru who does it for us how mm-hmm. I would like it to be viewed. So it's so simple. We want to keep things simple for people um, because what I know a lot of people don't know we all live in our own little silos and you know you could be a teacher so you're great at that right you, mm-hmm. you can be a firefighter you're great at that I, I could never do those things an attorney I'm not gonna be an attorney so I, I go to those people for advice as people will come to us for financial planning advice so we want to make sure we're always ahead of the curve staying very competitive and bringing new things to the table. And we actually do that um, proactively as a team. Um, and it's exciting because it's just not me. <laughs> doing yeah. it. And I got a bunch of people around me helping me do this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I know you, that you um, you give a lot of your time in the community as well, um, supporting a lot of area nonprofits. Um, you're currently the vice chair of the Ocala Metro Chamber and what? Economic Partnership. <laughs> yeah. So um, eventually, yeah, <laughs> eventually ascending to the role of chair in, in 2025. So we're looking for, looking forward to working with you even more closely. Um, but there's a, a lot of um, causes that I know probably have special significance um, for you. Um, what's one nonprofit that you'd want to highlight today? Well, I have two, actually. Oh, fabulous. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to tell you, I... I am big in giving money to people who need help. Like, I can't help it. Help it. I, uh, if I could feed every hungry person on the street, I would, right? Mm-hmm. Um but there's a couple of charities out there and I don't want to just pinpoint this one because it's so big, but I really believe in what they're doing. And it's actually the Tim Tebow foundation. I'm good friends with them. I work closely with the VP over there. Um, I'm, I'm just, they're trying to save the world, not just mm-hmm. here locally, but I mean, just so many things Tim Tebow is putting together in his uh, team and culture of amazing Christians. Uh, if you're looking to donate to a charity, you know, he, they have a plan and, mm-hmm. um, that they're, they're world changing. So Tim Tebow Foundation is one of my favorites. I mean, I love Danny Warfel's Desire, um, Street. He's got another amazing one as well. Uh, of course, these are all gators, <laughs> 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 right? Um, but there's quite a few out there. Dan Mullen and Megan Mullen, they um, have one for reading, which is really great. I mean, even Bruce Arians and his wife, they have their own f- um, foundation and, um, it, it's for kids. So it always seems to be something around children, which is mm-hmm. for me really great. It's like, I either want to help the young people or the retirees, the mm-hmm. people in the middle. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There's no, no, no room for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Um, we also have our own uh, charity, the a 501c3. It's called the grilled cheese foundation. Mm-hmm. And it really just started from when I was a kid, I grew up very poor, single parent, um, <laughs> lived in like a very small efficiency with a brother and sister, um, to get food on the table, we were fishing under the bridge. I mean, I remember those mm-hmm. days. I was in middle school, and I remember those days. And that's when I really realized we were poor. But the community where I lived, it was in the Florida Keys. I think when they figured out the single parent, you know, good guy trying to work really hard and um, to keep these kids going, the community has wrapped their hands around myself and my brother and a sister. We, we didn't have to pay for a dance, um, food. I mean, really, they took care of us. Mm -hmm. And so the Grilled Cheese Foundation is wrapped around that and the very first grilled cheese sandwich that we all got. Mm -hmm. Um, If you go to thegrilledcheesefoundation.com or zinnywealth.com, you can 
uh, read about it, but it's interesting because that foundation is really to help foster middle schoolers and high schoolers, their talents truly, Mm -hmm. um, in those single parent family households, because those single parent family households, sometimes they have just enough to get by, but not enough to foster those talents, whether it's Mm -hmm. playing the the saxophone or going to dance or cheerleader football, those extra ancillary things, people in that program we're also teaching about financial literacy, mm, right? Because mm-hmm. um, we want kids to go to college and say, don't get stuck in a rut and buy these credit cards and, and say, what's the difference between, you know, having a lemonade stand and et cetera, or, you know, owning a business or working for somebody, just really educate them. So they kind of mm-hmm. have this, this balance because schools aren't teaching this stuff right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we send them away with an ancillary scholarship to college. And we're also starting two new scholarships at CF college and Santa Fe college. So full wow. blown scholarships. Mm-hmm. We're going to do two new ones every year. And the people who are in it continue that scholarship till they graduate. So we're doing a lot of things with the foundation mm-hmm. and we're going to have some golf scrambles and we want companies and their kids to come help out on the holes and, you know, show other kids, kids helping kids. Like if, if you're one of the, you know, a very fortunate, blessed, you know, business and you have children and mm-hmm. you want them out, you know, helping other kids this is a great opportunity to do that. So again, um, Grilled Cheese Foundation just comes dear from the heart. And it mm-hmm. started all with my father, who's no longer with us anymore, but taught us a lot yeah. about that. What a wonderful organization. We'll be sure to include a link um, on the episodes page for the Grilled Cheese Foundation if um, anyone would like to, uh, to learn more. Thank you. And now a word from our sponsor. Hello, this is Jeremiah Block with the Douglas Law Firm. We are a full service law firm with many practice areas to serve your particular needs. We are located in downtown Ocala at 110 North Magnolia Avenue. Coming from a seventh-generation family here in Ocala, I am honored for our law firm to partner with the CEP to bring you these podcasts. We hope you enjoy. So now we've got some lightning round questions for you, Charisse. Um, so we'll start with what is your biggest pet peeve? Okay. I think these change from year to year. <laughs> <laughs> we like to we like to keep it interesting. 2022, <laughs> 2023 pet fee, peeve would be, okay. So I would say for sure 2023 is my pencils being sharpened. So I have atrocious handwriting. And if I have a dull pencil, it's even worse. So I like a <laughs> sharp pencil. So it's always like six sharpened pencils. And I grab the dull one. And I'm like, oh, the handwriting's awful. So you have peeve, sharpened pencils. So simple. It's silly, right? But but again, something that you may be yelling across the office to one of your colleagues, can you sharpen my pencil while you're in the middle of an interview, right? <laughs> my, my, my staff member's like, yeah. here's your, your electric sharpener, Sharice. Just put it right in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what advice would you give to yourself at age 15? Oh, my goodness. There are so many things I would tell myself because I can I see myself like I know exactly what I was doing when I was 15. Mm -hmm. Good things, not so good things, great things. Um, I would probably tell myself to walk before I run. Mm. I'm famous for trying to run before I walk because there's um, mistakes that can happen along the way. And uh, and I will tell you, philosophers, mentors, they always say, Sharice, you got to do this first. Mm-hmm. You got to do this first. I'm like, yeah, but I want to get over here. But to get over there, you got to do this. So really anybody walking before you run, that just means take it slow, learn from it and grow from it and keep growing and add on to it. Great advice. And how would you describe yourself in one word? Um, I would probably say resilient. Um, there's so many words out there, but resilient, being able to bob and weave. And when things, you know, don't go right, just, you know, grow from it, stay, um, right in the middle. You know, um, I think too many people are ride this roller coaster of emotion. And so I've gotten very good at, uh, tackling adversity Mm -hmm. and, um, just staying very resilient. And what was your first job and what did you learn from that experience? Oh, I love that job. Uh, my first job was in the Keys, Ala Morada, Ala Morada, uh, scuba dive shop, mm-hmm. and I filled tanks, and we had a dive boat, and you could put 40 tanks on this dive boat, so not only did I have to pick up these tanks and put them in these containers or fill them with air, I had to take them out and walk them out to the boat, and I just learned, um, it was hard work, mm-hmm. but I absolutely loved it, I loved that, um, I loved being around water, and around bubble heads, we call them. Um, and so I am a scuba certified as well. There were some perks to that. But uh, that was probably one of my, that was my first job. And it was a very cool experience. Mm-hmm. I had a great boss. Well, thank you again, Sharice. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. Again, we were with Sharice uh, Rivers, CEO and financial planner with Zinnia Wealth Management.
Thank you for having me. You're an amazing host, by the way. Oh, thank you, Sharice. I appreciate <laughs> that uh, that you took the time to be on the show. And, and again, um, giving some advice uh, to those listeners about what they can do in 2024 to get their financial house in order. Yes, Financial Peace University for the young ones. And come see us at Zinnia Wealth for if you're prepping for retirement. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Catalyst, hosted by the Ocala Metro Chamber and Economic Partnership, sponsored by Douglas Law Firm, and recorded live at Wiley Productions Podcast Studios. New episodes, guests, and perspectives on leadership premiere twice a month. Follow us on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy your podcasts. Have a suggestion for a future guest? Email us at thecatalyst at ocalacep.com.